Gardening and growing is all about experimentation, adapting to your area, your weather and whatever else comes your way. Gardening disasters can be frustrating, but the only failure is not to learn from your mistakes. Here are our top 5 garden disasters and how to avoid them. With excitement at the start of the gardening season, it's tempting to sow early to get a head start, perhaps using grow lights, cold frames or a heated greenhouse. Your seedlings will start off okay, but raise them too early and you risk them being killed by frosts later in the spring. Spindly or leggy growth is also a common problem, as low light levels in late winter in most locations will have your seedlings reaching for the available light, only to flop over. Give particular care to tender fruiting crops such as tomatoes, cucumbers and melons. Avoid this by following the guidance on the seed packet, which will show the earliest times for sowing indoors and planting outside. But get to know the weather in your area. If you know that the last frosts are likely in mid-May, start with this date and work backwards. For example, tomato seedlings will take six weeks to grow before they are ready for putting outside, so you'll want to sow them six weeks before mid-May, which is around the end of March. Take a look at our tutorial on using grow lights to give your seedlings the best start. Equally, starting your seeds too late can also be a problem. You'll spend all season tending to your precious plants, watching the flowers blossom and the fruit start to grow, only to find that the fruit doesn't ripen as the weather cools. This is more of a problem with crops or varieties which require a long growing season, such as melons and peppers. Avoid planting too early or too late by having a plan. The garden planner will show you when to sow your seeds based on the weather in your area and will send you email reminders. After weeks of raising seedlings, it's tempting to take them straight outside on a bright sunny day, only to see them wither within hours. The shock of cold temperatures and cool breezes can damage seedlings so that they never fully recover. Avoid this by taking seedlings out for just an hour in a sheltered place with no wind, then back indoors. Increase the time they are outside gradually over a week or more, a process known as hardening off. Greenhouses, cold frames or equivalents can be good holding places, sheltered from drying winds and with good light, but keep an eye on the weather forecast for frosts. Just one cold snap overnight can kill off weeks of hard work, so cover them in fleece, turn on the heat or bring them indoors if frosts are forecast. Planting large swathes of one crop in one place at one time is a risky strategy. Pests attracted to one plant can quickly demolish an entire crop overnight, or they can all be lost to frost or other poor weather. Even if you are successful in growing a bumper crop, you'll then have a large glut of produce which can at best be frozen or canned or at worst will go to waste. Avoid this by planting in succession. In other words, sowing small batches at a time a few weeks apart. Holding some back under protection will ensure you have spares that can be quickly put into the ground if any gaps appear. As well as raising spare plants, it's also worth utilising companion planting to attract beneficial predator insects to your garden, such as hoverflies. Some will also act as sacrificial crops. Nasturtiums, for example, are great for keeping aphids from pressure salad crops. After a long winter, it's easy to get carried away with sowing all the seeds you buy, only to find several weeks later that you have 30 tomato plants for your small backyard, far too many to be able to grow well. And although crops such as cherry tomatoes are small, the plants still require plenty of space in the ground. Avoid by considering how many plants you can realistically fit into your growing space. The garden planner can be used to work out how many plants you can grow in the area that you have. Plant spacings are shown with a coloured outline around the plant and dragging out a row correctly spaces the plants. The plant list will then summarise how many of each plant you'll need, but sow a few extra just in case. When things are growing well, it's easy to be optimistic that the rainy spell you've just had before you take a summer vacation will continue, only to experience the sunniest weather for months and find lots of dead and dying plants on your return. Or to think, I'm sure this will be okay in windy weather, and find row covers, cold frames and other garden objects strewn over your garden and seedlings and plants damaged. Avoid problems by planning for the worst and hoping for the best. For example, it's a good idea to install irrigation before you plant out or to ensure structures and objects are correctly installed and will last through the worst of the weather you're likely to get. The unexpected can nudge you towards gardening creativity, so it really pays to be flexible and to go with the flow. 
Confronted with a four pound glut of zucchinis or courgettes, I'd made new friends by offering to swap them for produce they might have a surplus of, and I'd been surprised with a range of tasty produce that can be made in the kitchen. If you've ever lost a whole tray of seedlings due to a late frost, you'll always be tempted to err on the side of caution in the future. The key skill when gardening is to learn from your mistakes, and if they can be somebody else's mistakes rather than your own, you'll have saved yourself some disappointment and increased your chances of success.